Welcome to another Lightroom Classic tutorial. In this video we will turn this shot into this one. So as you can see we will make the shot a lot darker, more gloomy, add some more atmospheric fog to it and just work on the colors for a little bit as well. If you want to follow along you can download this image, you can find the link in the description of the video and now let's begin with the editing. Here we are in Lightroom and as always I'm starting in the basic tab. Here I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard and you can see this will just lessen the contrast and less contrast is exactly what I want for a softer foggy look. But before I work on the contrast let's first adjust the white balance. I do want to make this whole shot a little colder so let's just bring down the temperature. Just a little bit and I don't think I need to touch the tint. How do we add the foggy look to this shot? First off I'm going to start by dropping the contrast. This will slightly raise the shadows and drop the highlights. And it kind of gives the feeling of summer fog lingering in the back. Next up I'm going to drop the highlights. I'm going to drop them quite a bit just so we can also get some more details in the branches against the bright sky. By the way this is an HDR image so that means I do have a lot more dynamic range to work with so it doesn't look weird if I am dropping the highlights that much. Next up I am also going to drop the shadows since I do want to have a little bit of contrast and as I said I want to make the shot a little darker. So dropping the shadows helps quite well here as you can see. Next up let's bring up the whites a bit because in those bright areas back there in the sky I do want to have almost some kind of overexposure. That's the reason for me to add some whites. Alright, but you can still see due to the reduced highlights we can keep those little details in the tree branches. So that's looking pretty good. Looking at this program you can see there is some kind of under and overexposure going on. I don't think that's a big deal. Maybe we will get rid of it later on. For now let's bring up the blacks and again this will help for this foggy soft look by just lowering the contrast in the very dark areas. Next up I do want to add some kind of sharpness so for that reason I'd like to always use the texture slider just a little bit because this slider is super powerful. And finally we can work with a little bit of negative dehaze to add more atmospheric fog to the image. So let's bring it down. I think that's way too much. Let's just add a small amount here. That's looking good so far. And finally I'd like to raise the vibrance just to get some more colors going on here. Okay and at this point after the basic adjustments we can take a look at the before and after comparison. You can see we do have less contrast, less colors, but also it seems a little more foggy so that's exactly what we wanted. Also it appears to be a little darker without losing details in the shadows which is very very important. You can see that when comparing the dark areas on the tree we almost have no detail while we have some nice detail on the right side. So next up let's do some masking and for this image it's a little more masking than usual. Let's start with the easy stuff. I'd like to make the very near foreground a little darker therefore I'm using a linear gradient and I'm just dragging up one like this. Of course I don't want to affect the trees so I need to modify this mask and therefore I'm simply subtracting a brush and then I'm just roughly brushing over the tree so we don't make the tree darker. Let's do the same on the other one. Again very very roughly painting over it just like that and once we are done with this I am going to drop the exposure. I'm dropping it quite a bit actually but I still as always want to have some detail visible in here. Then let's raise the texture to make the foreground sharper and I also want to add some clarity which I think will give us some great detail in here. I think that's a good spot for now. Next up let's use another linear gradient for the right side just on the edge of the tree like this. 
because I want to make this area a bit darker since it's not really important for the image. All right, maybe let's also reduce the whites in here. Looking good so far, but we do have a kind of strange border. So I'm going to drag it further on top of the tree a little bit. It's looking better. Okay, let's see. I think at this point I want to add some more glow in the distance. So for that I'm using a radial gradient. Let's just create a big one like this for the center and I'm going to rotate it a bit to fit the highlights in the back. This is looking good. I'm also making sure to overlap those trees on both sides a little bit. And in here, let's raise the blacks. Okay, and due to the overlapping, we get some really cool light effect coming over the tree in here. So I really like that. We can make this effect stronger by bringing down the dehaze. Just be careful to not overdo it, but I think in those cases, it always looks pretty cool. Now the tree in the far back is a little too bright, so I want to counter that by just bringing down the shadows. That's looking much, much better. Next up, let's add some more local glow. Therefore, I'm using another radial gradient and I just want to target those brighter spots in the distance. So again, I'm making sure to overlap a few things here and there, but I'm mostly targeting the bright spots. In here, again, let's raise the blacks and bring down the dehaze. All right. And I also want to try raising the whites just to give those highlights a very, very bright look. Maybe not that much, just a low amount again. I think that looks great. Now we can use those settings for a few other spots to make them glow. So I'm simply going to add another radial gradient on the bigger bright spots in the back, like here, for example. And we can add another one up here, maybe. Next up, I do want to work on the trees on the left and right side in the foreground. Therefore, I'm just using the brush to nicely mask them in, just roughly brushing over them. Okay, let's do the same on the left side. I guess that should be enough. So in here, let's raise the exposure first, giving the trees some more brightness. Also, I do want to add some contrast to them. And for more brightness, I could even raise the whites. Let's raise them all the way up. And for a sharper look, again, I'm using texture. I guess that looks pretty good at this point. Maybe let's also add some clarity, but I don't want to overdo it, so that should be fine. Okay, at this point, the foreground is still a little br too bright for me, so I'm using another linear gradient just for the left side, maybe like this, and bring down the exposure even further. All right, then there's one more mask left. I'm using another radial gradient just somewhere around here in the center because I want to have another very visible spot in here. And here, let's bring up the texture and now the clarity. So we're kind of adding some punch to this spot. All right, looking good so far. That's it for the masking. Again, we can take a look at the before and after comparison. You can see we have a very, very dark image with lots of glow and some artificial fog. I think it looks much, much better already. We can tweak it some more by doing some color grading. So let's do just that. I'm going to start in the HSL panel with the saturation. And right away, I do want to bring down the green saturation a notch. But at the same time, I'm going to bring up the yellow saturation. Okay. Then I'm switching over to the luminance tab and I'm going to raise both the yellow tones and the green tones. Perfect. Now the luminance, the increased luminance will just make the green and yellow foliage in the very near foreground a little brighter, which I think looks pretty good in this case. Then we do want to head into the color grading panel for some split toning. Here I just want to work on the shadows and the midtones. For both of them, I'd like to apply a very cold color tone somewhere in the blue range 
And with rather low saturation, I just want to get some blues in here. But that's looking really good. Now that's it for the shadows. Let's switch over to the midtones again. Blue color tone and low saturation. Perfect. Then that's it for the color grading. Next, I do want to head into the effects tab and just add a vignetting effect. All right. And then finally, in the details tab, we can sharpen this image. So bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking, and then sharpen this image some more. Perfect. So that is it for creating this dark, gloomy, glowing image style within Lightroom Classic. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you guys for watching this video. Actually, one more thing to mention, I heavily have cropped the image since the original composition wasn't that pleasing. So I cropped and rotated this image quite heavily.